everybody, welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Ner Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA The Internet's most passionate wine program and it's big ass glass time. And, uh, and a wonderful viewer, uh, Ben Browning, requested a bone show. Uh, bone being uh, the center, in the center of Burgundy wine production. Great value wines, um, and uh, and so we did it. And so, uh, you know, pick three bone wines, two from the 98 vintage, one from a older vintage, 1996, a classic, we'll get into that in a minute. And we're gonna drink these Pinot Noirs, bone within Burgundy in France, um, 100% Pinot Noir based wines for some of the newer viewers. Burgundies are very sought after and very difficult to drink in the first couple of years of your wine journey, but eventually many graduate to uh, Burgundy and become very passionate about these wines and start dropping some serious Benjamins uh, on these wines. And collectors are, are, are very um, into the wines, but at the same token, there's great places that aren't Montrachet caliber, uh, and aren't, you know, Premier Grand Cru, you know, sought after crazy three, four hundred dollar bottle Pinot Noirs that can be drank and, and acquired for much more interesting prices. And we start right off the bat with one that I think is a crazy price point. Uh, this is the Domaine Jean-Luc Dubois, 2008, Cherie Le Bon, Clos Margeau, 2008. And uh, this one only rolls in at 20 US dollars. And pretty interesting, one barrel, uh, made small little 7.5 hectare vineyard, 20 U.S. dollars, and uh, and in general, Shirley Bone's pretty interesting. Now, these wines can be very well priced, and really interesting Pinots. So you can see some great colors. I'll try to get a shot up here. Um, pretty interesting. So, you know, the Bone is a, a really interesting spot. It's in the Cote d'Or, um, and it, it tends to really have some very value-driven wines in the scope of all of Burgundy. Let's give us a sniffy sniff. Very nice light cherry fruit here coming across, very subtle, but not earthy. There's none of that stinky barnyard, you know, ass from the cow and pig kind of smell going on. None of that. No poop, no manure. No, this is much more fruit. Now, Bone in general has sandier soils, so most of these wines are more medium bodied in their approach. Very nice. I mean, it's really elegant and fruity and just makes me wonder, wow, this is a great nose and if this can deliver $20 Pinot Noir from France with the Euro where it is, is Burgundy the value of Pinot Noir as Oregon price points and Centro Tago Pinot Noir price points continue to rise? Let's give it a shot. I like the wine is coming across. The way the wine. Just thinking about it. So there's kind of like this sour, sauerkraut thing going on when you first taste it that I love so much. I love the savory component of this wine. Almost makes you think of soy sauce. Then there's like this really elegant like black cherry thing going on on the mid palate. And it gets a little grainy and earthy on the finish, but still dominated by fruit and bitter save no 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 not bitter savory savory tannins on the finish. Good value Pinot and a great introduction to Burgundy wine for people that are looking to get into it. This wine will be great if it's open for about an hour or two, maybe three hours decanting, and on its body makes me feel like this is a three to seven year wine um, in the cellar. Very Burgundy and very serviceable. This is like a, a Mark Lemke used to be for the Braves. Just a solid, you know, kind of player. Nothing special. Brave fans, you know what I mean. Um, I would score this wine 88 plus points. Good value, very good for Pinot Noir. 20 bucks from France. You, you get your Burgundy kind of, if you've never had a Burgundy, great wine to like pop your Burgundy cherry. Would really open up a very classic style. And this is textbook in its approach, so you really taste this and you start understanding what's going on with Burgundy. Good value, 88 plus, I like it, I don't love it, 
But um, in the big ass glass, a good start, and I'm interested to see what happens next. Now, I'm gonna rinse with this while I give some more shout outs, as I did yesterday. Look at a shout out some more of the people that uh, comment. One guy who definitely deserves a shout out is Parry B. Has been in the comments for a long time. Uh, a great maniac, I appreciate his, uh, his, you know, appreciation of our community. And Pawn Cop, I think Pawn Cop, who doesn't have a logo, Mott, right now, right, in his comments? I need Pawn Cop, used to, right, in like the old Gravatar. I feel like Pawn Cop's been around for a while. He needs his own logo, Pawn Cop. Upload one to discuss, you've gotta get one. Uh, this is the Domaine Millard, two th excuse me, 1996, Savigny Le Bon. Now, Savigny Le Bon is a very small town um, on the northwest part of Bone, has its own AC, very sought after stuff in general in the value, but this is a $50 wine, so this is not inexpensive. It's got some age to it, so we're paying premium. And as you can see, Mott, I don't know if you're catching this, it's definitely a darker wine than the last wine. So 50 Bones, uh, let's see what's going on here, a little snippy snip. Now this, Mott, smell this, this is stinky. Uh, Lawrence Leachman, I also wanna give you a massive shout out, and you. Mott, that killed you, right? Oh, that's just awful. I mean, that smells like straight, like you and I became Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, picked up the manhole, went down there, and it was like sewer city, right? Mm -hmm. This is like a puddle of water that's been sitting for five days after a storm near a sewer, and then you touched it, and the stink came up. I mean, this is like going to Old McDonald's Farm and not only having the sheep, but maybe like a rhino, because now you're at a farm in like Africa, farted on you. This is rhino fart, I mean, at its finest. This is very aggressive, very earthy, and ladies, I apologize, this is gross. I understand, it is gross, but I need to paint the picture. This is some stinky ass. <laughs> I mean, sorry, I don't like the mop. Bleep that. Make sure that's bleep. We, we do not curse on, on the Thunder Show. So very earthy, very stinky, because we got the kids watching. Mom, we have a lot of kids. Very, you know, barnyard, uh, almost like forest floor, stinky stink, stink stink. And I love it. I mean, it's just earthy, it's real, it smells terroir-like. It smells kind of like mushroomy and poopy-me and kind of stuff like that. Let's give it a whirl. And this is why I love wines like this. It's still very aggressive. And there's a topsoil component and some earthiness. But there's beautiful red fruit here, almost a cranberry kind of thing mixing in. Um, it's kind of like if cranberries were grown in a farm and like standing up on a tree, which they aren't, and that's what this would kind of like smell like because it's the cranberry mixing in with kind of the earthy manure-like characteristics. Very earthy wine but I like it very much my style, very much not everybody's style. But to me, this is a 90 plus point wine. It's got a great finish. It's a 1996, you're talking about a wine that's 15 years old already. And look for it to last, based on the tannin structure that I see here, for another 10 years. It's elegant. If you're having a duck dish, there's nothing better, nothing. And I would pair it, it's got some age. And if somebody's looking to have a nice fine dinner with some diplomats, make me pretend you have some diplomats coming over. Or let's say maybe some relatives and you've got them coming over and you're looking to have a nice meal, maybe you're, ha you're celebrating, for example, this Friday is AJ's birthday, so maybe you're celebrating a birthday dinner, this would go tremendous with varieties of food, especially on a lighter side, a pheasant, a hen, a Cornish hen, some game-like character, you know, foods, and I, I just think it's excellent, 90 plus points to me, beautiful stuff. God, it smells great. My, too stinky for you though, right? Give me something. You want to know what we did you ever go see the circus at Madison Square Garden? You know, you I like did. Brothers? Yeah, yeah, did Barnum and Bailey. Back and you could see the animals? Yeah. That's what it smells like. It's like now. a 4-H convention, right? I mean, it is earthy, but it is yummy. Absolute counterfeit. Let's move on. A little rinse. I might have rinsed a little bit too much. Right here we have the Domaine du Chateau de Chery, uh, 2008 Bone Le Touron Premier Cru. This wine is 89 to 92 points. Allen Meadows, which is a monster score, 52 US dollars. And this is one of the best vineyards in all of the bone. Right here, my, zoom in. Right here, the Le Touron. And there's La Grievie, and there's Le Arvois, and there's Le Champ Piment. And these are some of the vineyards you may want to look for when you're looking for wines from the bone. This is imported by Becky Wasserman, uh, who's one of the great importers of um, 
of uh, burgundy soap mount right here. It is $52, as you can see here. Becky Wasserman. So if you see that, she's a tremendous uh, importer of premium Burgundian wines. 52 bones, 90, 89 to 92 points. Alan Meadows. Adam Meadows is a beast. Beast Alan Meadows is. Uh, he is the Burg Hound. He is becoming the voice for Pinot Noir based wines in America. So you should check him out as well. Let's give this a sniffy sniff. As a matter of fact, link up BurgHound.com. People might want to sign up for his newsletter. So this is earthy as well and kind of dirty, but there's more fruit and almost more vegetal, so you can see. Not as stinky, Mott, but still earthy. Mm -hmm. What do you think about this? Is this more appealing to your nose? And also, Definitely more appealing. Because the last one was just straight stinkified. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so this one is more appealing. Mm -hmm. This one smells a little more spicy. This almost has that radish thing going on that I like to bring up once in a while. Red fruit, red flowers. Let's give it a whirl. Mmm. Wow, was this silky smooth. Really good wine. Elegant Burgundian Pinot Noir. Le Touron, it's a great vineyard. Wow. And this has a pepper-like characteristic, almost like a Zinfandel-like pepper uh, on the body, on the nose too, but really on the mouthfeel. Great elegance. It has a mouthfeel that just takes over. It's like coating. Um, it's kind of like what caramel does to your mouth. It just takes over. This wine takes over um, dominatrix style on your palate. And you just have to succumb to it um, because you want to. It's a very well-made wine. Very well-structured. One of the better mid-palates on a Pinot Noir that I've seen in a long time. And it's drinking exceptionally well. Great long finish. Beautiful red fruit. This wine will last for 10 to 15 years would absolutely pair tremendous with simple foods like hot dogs because it just would dominate. Sometimes these most elegant, most sophisticated wines go so easy and so well with casual foods. But again, this also, like the prior wine, would love to see guinea hen, uh, Cornish hen, uh, would just be tremendous with a duck dish, especially if you got some really great red cherry sauce. Um, just beautiful, maybe even with a veal chop if it's light enough. I love this wine. I'm going to score this wine 93 points. I think it's a spectacular wine. I think um, anybody looking to discover Pinot Noir should find it, and I, I find it superior to the prior wine, though I like the fact that this has some age on it and it's showing different characteristics. And if you want really like textbook, like what is stinky stink stink, you can check that out. So it's a great learning wine. It's just a better wine. Um, but both were great, and what a great job by the bone! Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Ben, for uh, recommending us to do this show. And uh, in general, really enjoyed this episode. Coming off a very staggering and shockingly upsetting Oregon Pinot Noir show, these uh, Oregon Pinot Noir and white wine show, these Pinots from the Burgundy Bone region really come through and shine. And, and even the value play, kudos! Great, great episode. Question of the day. Um, if you've had the op if you have the opportunity to visit one establishment in the world, restaurant, stadium, monument, uh, legendary scene of something in the world, where would be the one place in the world that you would want to visit? Now, lurkers. Pay attention to what Lawrence Leachman and Perry B and Pawn Cop do and comment in the episodes. This is a very wide open question. I know there's a ton of CKCs watching this. That is the college kid crew. Big shout out to you guys. This is a question you need to jump in, create a discuss account, and leave a comment. Where is the one place? And go specific on me. I don't want to hear Kansas. I need a specific spot. I want like Madison Square Garden, not New York City. You know... I want the Hollywood sign. I want to be on the, standing in front of the H. I want to get specific. Get real specific on me. Looking to peek into where your interests are. Think about taking this show on the road. It could be a little fun. You, with a little bit of me, we are changing the wine world. No matter what they say. <laughs>